So as fate would have it, we have yet another anti-vegan documentary, this one boldly titled Beyond Impossible, which is a play on words of two of the biggest companies out there, Beyond Meat and Impossible Burger. I need to take a minute before I actually start because this one, this one hurt. This one hurt. The stupidity that I, that I was forced to watch, it actually hurt me right here. The movie begins with one of the most monumental ironies I think I've ever heard. Our friend Vinny starts off by saying, you've been lied to. The reason why this is insanely ironic is because the meat, egg, and dairy industries literally survive and thrive by selling you lies. Beef is good for protein. Milk does a body good. And eggs have good cholesterol. Vinny, the documentary's creator, starts off at establishing a president of thinly veiled mockery, citing that, quote, if you don't go vegan, the planet is somehow going to end in two years, close quote. You and I both know the probabilities of that happening are slim to none, but as with most non-vegans, our friend Vinny here tries to instill a sense of disbelief right out of the gate. I feel like I'm going to do a lot of talking in this video, so just bear with me. Let me grab a sip. Not sponsored, by the way. Vinny continues to try and debunk an actual plant-based diet by saying that, quote, 80% of people stop eating plant-based after just three months. I was looking for a source to this commentary shortly thereafter, but I didn't see one. Shocker. Immediately after that, he poses an obvious fact that fries, pasta, and sugar are vegan, and with every word, he heightens his enunciation as if we're dumb and didn't know this already. He's obviously implying that eating all the wrong foods, even when they are plant-based, can ultimately be hazardous to your health. Just a few seconds later, he again mocks a healthy plant-based diet by saying that there are items that you can be eating, like broccoli and kale, assuming that you want to eat kale with a sad clown face. Vinny then proceeds to inform the public that, quote, humans didn't know how to extract vitamins from foods until the early 1900s. That might actually be true, Vinny, but uh, does that mean that vitamin weren't present in the foods we ate back then just because we couldn't extract them? No. It was impossible to be a vegan before that, he adds. Also no. In the next segment, he tells us about all of the nutrients that we would have to eat just to get our daily dose. This is, of course, assuming that you eat nothing but fake meats, and he proceeds to reel off tons of vitamins and minerals just to scare you. Nobody in their right mind would eat nothing but Beyond Meat and Impossible Burgers all day, every day. Again, this is a scare tactic. Don't fall for it. Eating plant-based whole foods is about balanced lifestyle that might include the occasional fake meats, as he calls them. Vinny now states that veganism is all over pop culture and shows us clips of basketball stars, digital influencers, and even politicians as his example. Vinny... I can't drive through any highway in the United States without seeing a sign for a fast food restaurant every 20 minutes. If you did this implying that vegans are pushing some sort of agenda, I can't go anywhere without seeing 99 cent chicken nuggets thrown in my face. Give me a break, dude. To no surprise, Vinny now gives us the classic take that non-vegans have regarding sentient beings being killed in the commercial crop industry by showing us a clip of a rabbit being followed by an agricultural tractor. Listen, animals die anywhere. Yes, it's true. But unlike the deaths that occur in crop farming, those deaths are accidental and unintentional as opposed to men and women actively and purposely slicing throats. Nobody has ever said veganism is perfection. Nobody, Vinny. Nice try, buddy. Vinny pivots to vitamins and nutrients once again, saying that, quote, protein from plants and proteins from animals are not created equally. Somebody give this guy a Pulitzer. No <laughs> He tries to back this up by saying that animal proteins are, quote, complete, which means they contain essential amino acids and in the end, quote, easier to absorb. He then gives the floor to a woman named Nia, a self-proclaimed science journalist, whatever the hell that means, who states that most people can't absorb the vitamins that come from supplements. I can't help but notice that everyone so far has chosen to conveniently say the word many as a collective instead of providing an actual peer-reviewed statistic. Don't think I haven't noticed. Another doctor comes out by saying that, quote, you need a lot of processing to get there. Um, what? Do people bite into cows as soon as they're hungry? No. Do cows become injected with all sorts of hormones and antibiotics? 
Yes. Do they get slaughtered on a kill floor? Also, yes. Do their bodies get chopped up and stored in a cool environment to prevent it from rotting? Also, yes. How is that not a process? Are you stupid or something? Vinny now poses a question. Why are all these companies going out of their way to put together a product that looks, feels, smells, and tastes just like meat? Well, I'll tell you, Vinny. That's because we're opposed to animal cruelty and the repercussions of the byproducts of making meat, not flavor. <laughs> Vinny then tells us that, quote, eating meat does not cause climate change at all. I'm not even going to address this one because you and I both know it's not true. Was there any fact checking on this? Man, they literally let anyone on Amazon have a documentary. This is insane. As if that wasn't obliviously ignorant, his next topic of discussion is to deny the fact that Western diets do not contribute to obesity, certain types of cancers, diabetes, and many others by putting a family feud talk show X sound after each one. Shortly thereafter, Vinny clarifies the error by saying that, quote, correlation is not causation. And although this might be true, run tests with vegans to see how many become diabetic and contract cancer compared to meat eaters. If the fixed variables stay the same and what changes is the animal food product intake, then yes, Vinny, correlation is causation. In the next scene, Vinny begins to reel off the list of ingredients in Beyond Meat in a condescending manner, citing that the beet juice is quote-unquote fake blood. Semantics, as you know, is one of the greatest tools that non-vegans use to debate us, and it lets me know that they're running on fumes as far as arguments are concerned. Vinny says that, quote, a lot of people are thinking that fake meat is the way to go. This is disingenuous and you're essentially putting words in people's mouths, Vinny. It's highly irresponsible to paint consumers with a broad brush when you don't have statistics or even a single poll to record your findings. Unreal. Vinny explains that studies cost money, a lot of money, and informs the viewer that it's companies like Beyond Meat and Impossible Burger who fund these studies with the intent to be able to sell their products as the real meat industry fades. It's funny you say that, Vinny. More money is being spent by the meat, egg, and dairy industries combined to keep their well-oiled machines going, not to mention they're heavily subsidized to do so. Fake meat, marketing, and advertising pales in comparison to what mainstream conglomerates spend to get their companies going. Again, you're trying to paint veganism as the addenda propagandist because literally anything that defies the status quo will be labeled as such. This is a joke of a documentary and it writes itself. Unbelievable. I think that what has bothered me the most about Vinny's take on this documentary is the fact that he mocks and vilifies companies and health organizations as creepy. And yes, that's an actual word he used to describe them because of the fact that making money is an obvious result of selling plant-based products that cut back on emissions, put a dent in climate change, and minimize millions of lives lost unnecessarily. It's almost as if v Vinny vehemently opposes the win-win situation that veganism has proven works. Laugh all the way to the bank while eradicating suffering and slowing down global warming. What's not to like, Vinny? The mocking continues, this time towards a planetary health diet whose goal is to be able to provide sustainable, all-encompassing foods worldwide. Immediately, Vinny pokes fun at the idea, citing that a Cajun in Louisiana, an African in Africa, and an Icelandic person in Iceland will have a hard time doing this. Perhaps, but this is the typical from anyone that opposes thinking outside of the box and is skeptical of change that makes them uncomfortable. Sound familiar, Vinny? <laughs> In what seems to be the blink of an eye, Vinny continues his mockery, saying that veganism is a cult, a religion, and proceeds to ridicule vegan activism and outreach, stating that it's not normal behavior. Of course it's not, Vinny. Normal behavior cannot continue if you want things to change, can it? That's literally the Einstein definition of insanity, which I'm starting to think is what you are. You seem to be more concerned about how vegans go about their business without actually being a member of this community. It makes you sound jealous and short-sighted. This is laughable. Vinny talks about artificial intelligence and failed incredibly at making the connection of how it's tied to Beyond Meat and Impossible Burger. He winds up all over the place and continues on an incoherent ramble about nothing. More vilification ensues by an entire fiasco with Dr. Michael Greger, whom we all love, concerning his get-on, get-off stance of his appearance in this documentary. 
Vinny even exposes Dr. Greger because of a strategic stance on not treating patients, instead resorting to travel the world catering to the masses about the scientific evidence behind a plant-based diet. Dr. Greger says this himself in the soundbite, thus clarifying Vinny's doubts as to his expertise, and it somehow makes it onto the documentary. Talk about shooting yourself in the foot, Vinny. <laughs> Vinny leaves animal cruelty for the very end, of which you know I am a staunch opposer. He claims that in order for us to live, something has to die. Not quite sure if that works, Vinny. Another convenient half-truth from Vinny, citing once again the byproduct of crop farming as his main argument against veganism's seemingly holier-than-thou attitude. More often than not, nobody dies as a result of crop farming, and the casualties of this are nowhere near at the height of the billions that are slaughtered each year. Vinny is yet again grasping at straws and giving us the underlying hypocritical slap in the face by attempting to throw at the wall to see what sticks. It's sad to see that countless people who watch this flick are gonna believe that bull uses some no-name farmer from the middle of nowhere in Arkansas to showcase the murder of innocent pigs stumbling across a family farm whose murder could have easily been prevented with nothing more than a fence. Vinny tries to make his point using graphic images of these defenseless animals with footage of said farmer sniping them down in front of their babies. Go figure. Listen, I've seen my fair share of arguments from the other side, but this documentary, and I use that term loosely, is by far the worst thing I've seen in promotion of a counter stance against veganism. It's almost as if one of my nine-year-old TikTok trolls consumed Vinny's body and made an awfully long talking head video about every single dumb rhetoric that I've come across social media. I honestly don't know how Amazon was coerced into featuring this on Prime, and if it wasn't for making this video, there's no way I would have put $6 in Vinny's pocket for having rented it. I wholeheartedly believe that even some omnivores would be embarrassed as to how this film was put together. Just when you think you're making vegans look bad, Vinny somehow made it worse. Stop it. Get some help. I now leave you with one of my favorite scenes of all time, which promptly summarizes how I feel about Beyond Impossible. Enjoy, Vincent. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Go dummy, go be